We want to know what the Word says about what we are about to do. And so I want to invite you to pray with me as we start the study for this morning. And if this is your first time in this church, South Tacoma Adventist Fellowship, then you came on the right day because we have a special ceremony, a special time to, together as we celebrate what Jesus commanded us to celebrate in remembrance of him. So you're welcome, welcome to, to come to our church and, and uh, also you, you pick the right day. And for those who, who are uh, online, we also wanna welcome you to what we are gonna be doing here. We're sad that you are not uh, able to partake of the emblems, but we are gonna be praying for you that the Holy Spirit will be also with you as we celebrate the communion service, a very special time for the church here in South Tacoma. Join me please as we pray, let's pray. Father in heaven, once again we thank you for this privilege. We thank you, Lord, because all that we are remembering today is what Jesus did for us, is doing for us, and is about to do for us. So we wanna pray, Lord, that as we talk about this simple subject, we will get the profound lessons that we can receive from the, from the teaching. We ask you, Lord, to bless us, to minister, to minister to each one of us and to speak to our hearts in, in such a powerful way that we will all be, be shaken in such a way that we will allow your Holy Spirit to transform us and to work in us and through us. We pray all this in the wonderful name of Jesus. And everybody say, amen, amen and amen. Have you ever forgotten the car key? And you go around the, the house and looking everywhere. You go to the living room and look in the couch and start opening the, every, every single cabinet in your place and just looking for that key because you know it should be somewhere and you look and you look and don't find it. And then you go to, to the bathroom and start looking there and just open the toilet. It's not there. You keep on walking and look for your pet. You find your pet, open the, it's not there. And you, wherever you look for the key, you do not find the key. What do you put? Where do you put the key? And finally, you start catching up with the, that noise that has been following you all along. You went to every place in the house and there was a noise there and you start realizing there was a noise following, uh, following you. And magically, at that moment, you remember, you have had the key all the time in your front packet. It was right there with you and you were looking for the key. Do you know that we human beings tend to forget things easily. We tend to forget things. And, and what is even more painful is, is that sometimes we even forget people. Just, just think about parents. Just think about how painful it will be for, for you to be forgotten by your children. Right? When we forget our parents, when we forget our grandparents, isn't that a painful experience? We human beings tend to forget, we tend to forget people as well. We tend to forget everything. So Jesus, the creator, knowing that we, he created us, he knows us, he, he knows that we tend to forget things, he gave us, uh, uh, in, a, in a masterly way, he, he come up with an idea to give us Something that will remind us, very simple, that we are, will remind us always, always of him. Because our tendency, as we forget things, we also forget about him. And you know what happens with Jesus when we forget about Jesus? He gets hurt. And so the communion service is given for us to be remembered of the one that, they, that has done so much about us. But have you noticed how many times we do things without knowing why we do those things? Many times we just go along with the majority. Oh, that's, that's what we do in the church. So everyone will do it and we just be part of the 
event because everybody, everybody else does it. And so I thought it would be a good, a good time for us to study why is it that we celebrate communion service. And just based on a simple, simple question, what is communion service? What is this? So I want to invite you to a short journey. And, and when we have communion service, since the program is longer normally, what we do is we try to do a teaching that is short. So we have more time for the food washing, which is the ritual of humility, and also the Lord's Supper. So the question that I want us to, to uh, ponder upon to this morning is, what is communion service? Is that, is that something that excites you, friends, to study about? What is communion service? What is communion service? So the journey, again, the short journey that we are going to have now together is just going through the names that the Bible gives to this event, communion service. In the Bible, we, we can learn a lot about what the Bible teaches when we go just to the names. So I want to invite you to the first one. There are four names that we find in the Bible that are, are given to the same event that we call communion service. So let's go to each one of them and see what we can learn. Follow me. Go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 20. We are going to use our Bibles, so please open your Bibles in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 20. And when you there, say amen so I know it's time for us to read. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 20. This is what the Bible says. This is the first name of first commun uh, communion service that we will find here in order to understand what this communion service is all about. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 20. And this is what the Bible says. Paul is speaking. Paul writing here. Therefore, when you come together in one place, it is not to eat the what, friends? Lord's Supper. Communion service for Paul. Another name for communion service is therefore the Lord's Supper. Okay, so what can we learn from that? What can we learn? What is communion service? Communion service is the Lord's Supper. But what is the Lord's Supper? That's a fair question. Is the Lord's Supper, number one, is the supper because it was, it was number one, it, we, don't, we don't celebrate at that supper time. We are in the morning here, right? So what is it called supper? It is called supper because it was instituted at a supper. Matthew chapter 26 and, and verse 20 says, says that it was the evening, it was the evening and they came together, the disciples and Jesus was the evening and they sat, all the 12 sat and started partaking of the supper. So simply put, it's, it's a supper because it was instituted at a supper. Clear enough? What were they doing at this moment? What did, what were they doing? They were celebrating one of the most important Jewish festivity, and that is the Passover. What is the Passover? The Passover simply was or is a celebration, a commemoration of their freedom from the Egyptians' slavery. They were a slavery to the Egyptians. God delivered them, and God said, now, from now on, once a year, you will celebrate the Passover. And the Passover, the word simply means that the angel passed over the house that was marked with the blood of the lamb. So they would celebrate that every year. And that's, that's again, that's this Passover that was a Jewish celebration. Jesus took it over and said, now, from now on, you will not celebrate the Passover, you will celebrate me. Because that's what communion service is all about, it's about Jesus. So from that moment on, the Passover changed its name into the Lord's Supper, and it became the supper of whom, friends? Of the Lord. It's his. It's his. So he uses this to refresh our memories so that we will know that when we come together to celebrate the communion service, we are coming together to remember him, what he, what he did for each one of us. So the center, the heart of our celebration, at once again, especially at communion service, especially at the Lord's Supper, is Jesus. Now, the this, I think, is very interesting that Jesus will take bread and grape or, the, or, or juice, 
grape juice for us to be re reminded of what this is all about. And this is very interesting because bread and, uh, and, and grapes were uh, stapled back then. It was, it was in every single meal, pretty much. So what can we learn out of that, friends? God had in his mind that for them to remember him was as simple, as, as, as vital as eating every time. So every time they would have a meal, they would remember God. Every time they would eat bread, they would remember Jesus. Every time they would drink a, a grape juice, they would remember Jesus. So he would take this simple uh, um, daily um, food and drink that they would use so that they would be remembering Jesus every time. Do you know that Jesus is not just to be remembered on the Sabbath? Some of us think that the Sabbath in the morning, at, 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 what time is it now? 11.30, that's the time, oh, Jesus, yes, hi, Jesus. And then at 12.30, bye, Jesus, see you next Sabbath, see you next week. Now, the fact that Jesus moved from the Passover and said, now this is not the Passover anymore, but it's the supper of the Lord, the Lord's Supper, then that also means that this, con this convocation, this moment belongs to him. Supper of the Lord or the Lord's Supper belongs to him. And it belongs to him because he also promises to be here when we celebrate it. Do you hear that, friends? When we celebrate communion service, Jesus is here. And you might not be able to see him, but he is here in his spirit. Through his spirit, he is here right here. Now, let me ask you this question. How will your conduct, your behavior be if you are in the presence of the highest authority of this country? How will you behave? Talk to me, friends. What would you do if, if, if the highest authority of this country is right here in this room? Will you behave the same? See, it has to do with the right attitude because the highest authority of, the, of this country is not here, but the King of Kings and Lord of Lords is here. So that means that we are to examine ourselves, and that's why Paul talks about examining ourselves. We have to, we have to go deep into the, the, um, the most profound and, and, and deep corner of our lives and examine where we are, friends. What is that sin? What is that word? What is that attitude? Have I confessed it to the Lord? And so because he is here, we are to be clear with him and by him. Because he is here, we are to examine ourselves and say, okay, there is nothing that is separating me from him. I can be here with him because he is with me. It's a, pre a perfect moment for us. The Lord's Supper, which is another name for the communion service, is a perfect moment for us to, to be acquainted with the Lord. But there is another name, there is another name that is given in the Bible for communion service. And that name is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 21. We are in the same, in the same book, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 21. You there? All right. The Bible says, you cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of, what friends? Demons. You cannot partake of the Lord's table we have found the other name we you cannot partake of the lord's table and of the table of demons okay so number one communion service is called by paul as the lord's supper number two communion service is called by paul as the lord's table and we will we will get a little bit onto the these the table of the demons and the table of the lord we will get there but before that when we talk about being sitting at a table and these mothers you will identify with this don't you teach your kids how to behave at a table don't you i i remember i remember my, my childhood my mother would teach me how to sit my mother would teach me what how to use the the, the uh, silver world and, and and what do what to do and what not to do she would tell me don't don't spiral the the soup right when you go don't do that 
I mean, in the, par in the part of the, of the world where I grew up, that wasn't okay. Now, if you go to Japan, if you don't do that, you're being rude. Right? But, but, but in my country, if you go, that's a no-no. Don't do that. So my mother taught me uh, manners at the table. And when we, talk, when we talk about the Lord's table, we are talking about manners at the table because we're sitting at a table. It's, it's inevitable to talk about uh, how I behave at that table. But listen to this. Paul talks about here, God says through Paul that we, he says, let's go back again to the text. It says 21, in verse 21, something very interesting there. It says, you can now drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of the demons. Why is he talking about these kind of things? Sim simple. This is simple, friends. Remember what we studied last week? Remember what we studied last week? What God is saying in simple words is, you cannot be with one foot here with the Lord and the other foot here with the world. There is not such a thing as being that divided because the moment you are halfway in and halfway out, you are all way out. So what is it that the Lord wants? The Lord wants you to move from the in-between. Didn't we talk about friends? He doesn't want you to be, okay, one time here and the other time over here. No, once you're doing that, you are all the way out. He wants you to make up your mind. He wants you not to serve the devil. He wants you to serve him. See, see when we come to sit at the table on this special day, the Sabbath, like today, we think that some, some of us think that something magical should happen and I start be, being that person that I was not during the six days. There is a reason why the seventh day is the seventh day and not the first day. Because if the Sabbath is the seventh day, that, that means that there are six days before that day. So don't expect for something magical to happen on the Sabbath if that relationship and connection with the Lord didn't happen the other six days of the week. Anybody home? When you come to Sabbath, when you come to church on the Sabbath, what will the experience that you're going to have here on the seventh day, Sabbath day, is a result of what happened during the remaining six days of the week. Is that clear, friends? So when you come to the table, to sit around the table, remember that the other name is the Lord's table. When you come to the table, to sit around the table, you are expected, you have said, People around the table has, have certain expectations of you, right? If you come with dirty hands, if you can come with dirty face to the table, what parents will say to the kids? Well, wash! So if we, if we come with sinful hearts to the table, what is it that we have to do? Go wash. And Jesus says, I am the living water. I am the living water. All that we have to do is go back to Jesus, wash yourself up and come back and sit down with Jesus. So this is in, in the context of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 27. Have you read, ever read that? 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 27 simply says, Therefore, whoever eats this bread, talking about the communion service, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy have you heard that word unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the lord that word unworthy has has been misinterpreted many times people think that this unworthy means that you are not if you are a sinful person if you are still um, a slave of sin you are not to be part of the the the, the uh, communion service and that's not what the text is saying because this word unworthy is actually adverb. And that means that it doesn't define who you are. It's what you're doing at that moment. So who is, if it were about worthiness, then who is worthy to come and sit with Jesus? How many of you? None. Nobody's worthy to come to Jesus. We don't come to the table because we're worthy. We come to the table because Jesus has invited us. And so it doesn't talk, it's not talking about our worthiness. It's talking about once you are already sitting there, please don't, don't, don't misbehave. So the text doesn't, doesn't talk about who, who is worthy to be sitting at the table. It talks about how 
you partake. You're already at the table. Enjoying the moment that you have with Jesus because you're already at the table. But when you're there, remember that Jesus is the center of, that, of this celebration. Amen? In other words, God is saying, you are welcome to join me. Come to me. I have washed you. I have forgiven you. I have, I have erased all your sins and iniquities. Now come and join me. Come celebrate with me. What is communion service? Number one is the Lord's Supper. Number two is the Lord's table. Number three is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 16. You there say amen. Okay, the Bible says, The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the, what friends? Communion of the body of Christ. There it is, our third name. Number one, Lord's, the Lord's Supper. Number two, the Lord's Table. Number three, communion service. It's called by Paul, by God in the Bible, communion. And this is important to see because, again, these names given to communion service are names that teach us what communion service is all about. Communion. What is communion? What is this word used here? When we talk about the word communion, we are talking about the, the unity of the church. How? How is that? The word communion comes from the Greek word that is very known. I'm pretty sure you have heard it. It's koinonia. Have you heard about that word? Koinonia is a, is a Greek word that simply means fellowship. Fellowship. But when you talk about fellowship, you are talking about sharing. You share time, you sh time with your friends, you share um, uh, thoughts, you share um, likes and dislikes. So fellowship is a time of sharing. Therefore, koinonia talks about sharing. When we come to celebrate communion service, and this is what the word communion teaches us, we are coming together as the body of Christ. We are coming together as the family of Christ. We are coming together as the family of God. Because the moment you have accepted the Son of God, you become a child of God. And the moment you have become a, you have become a son of God, at that moment you become part, you come to be part of the family of God. You are a child of God. And so when you come together, when we come together to celebrate communion, we are coming together to share. To share. We come and sit and all, not all the, the Christians in the world are coming to sit with us at the table, but, but most of us are here. And that's, this is a special moment, and that's why we do it on this special day, because we want to have the majority of you with us. Because when we come to the table, we are coming as a family. Because family that eats together stays together. Right? Someone, you should say something about that. When we eat together, we stay together. Isn't, it food, food, isn't the food important? And so we, we are part of this, 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 this family of God. And that's why we fellowship. We eat together. We st spend time together. And so that's, that's an important reason why to be here. On, on an imp important day like this. Because we come to the table and we spend time with another, other other children of God. And that's what we do on the Sabbath because this is the day when you guys have time to come. We could, we could have done it on any other day, but we will have a quarter, of, a quarter of, of, of the population that we have this morning here. But we want everyone to join us here because this is a family celebration. That's an important reason to be here, friends. When we come to the table, when we sit at the table, we are claiming our place in the family of God. That's what we can learn about that word communion, which is another name for communion service. And our last name, our last name is the, word, the name found in Acts chapter 2 and verse 42. Acts chapter 2 and verse 42. 
Communion service. What is communion service? Number one is the Lord's Supper. Number two is the, is the Lord's table. Number three is communion. Acts, let's look for the last one. Acts chapter 2 and verse 42. Acts chapter 2 and verse 42. Are you there? And this is what the Bible says. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. Which word do you think is there in the Greek? Koinonia. That's the Greek word for fellowship that also means sharing. Koinonia. So doctrine and fellowship. And here is the name. In the, what friends? Breaking of bread and in prayers. Breaking of bread. Communion service is the Lord's Supper. Communion service is also the Lord's table. Communion service is communion. And number four and last, communion service is breaking of bread. And this was very common. This was very common back then. People will, will meet always and break bread. This was a, a common way for the early, the early church to, to speak about the communion service. And why, the reason why this was common is because they will always, always have a, a meal before they, they will celebrate communion service. Always a meal was involved. And so that's why they call it the breaking of bread. And literally, they would break a piece of bread and celebrate this. But for them, in the, in the um, New, New Testament times, they will come together to fellowship, to spend time together. They will be so, so acquainted with each other that they will become a family. You know what family does? When a, when a community becomes a family, you know what happens? When one member of that community, when that one member of that family goes down, everyone else goes and helps that person out. That's what the family is. When somebody in the, in, the, in the family is broken, everyone else has to be there to get the pieces together and be used by the Lord and restore that person. When somebody is sad, everyone else in the family has to be there supporting, helping, comforting that person. That's what the family does, friends. A family supports each other. Members in the family support each other. So, this is one of the reasons why in, in, in Acts chapter 20 and verse 7, when we find Paul in a missionary endeavor, he was getting ready to go to a very important mission trip. In Acts chapter 20 and verse 7, we find now the, the, the following text. It says, now on the first day of the week, the first day of the week, which day is that? Which day is that? Sunday. When the disciples came together to break bread, that's the other name, Paul, ready to depart the next day, spoke to them and continued his message until midnight. Many people come to this text and say, see, see, they were meeting on Sunday. They were now meeting on, on, on the day before Sunday. The text is not saying that, friends. The text is saying that they were, Paul was so caught up on preaching that he went over till midnight. So he started at this time, and he didn't stop till it was midnight. So they were at midnight is what day already? Once the sun sets, what day is on, on, on Saturday night? Sunday, according to the Bible. So it's not that they were meeting on Sunday morning. It's that they started meeting on Sabbath, and they went all the way till Sunday came. They were studying. That's, that's how true Bible students get excited about studying the Bible. You can't stop. You want to know more. You want to study more. And that's what they are experiencing. But the important point here is that they, they, were, they got together to study. They got together to fellowship. And they did what? They broke, they broke, broke bread. Because it was part of their, their custom. And that's also how they, they um, named or they knew about this communion service. And they, they, they will come together to commune. So this event was very important for the, for the primitive church, for the apostolic church. It was very important. And it's very important for the church today. And that's why, friends, we, we celebrate communion service on the Sabbath. We celebrate on the Sabbath because we want the majority of us being here so we can take part of this important event of the church. Why is it is so important? Because we come in to celebrate what Jesus has done for us. It is important. 
So communion service, what is communion service? It's the Lord's Supper, it's the Lord's Table, it's communion, and it's the breaking of bread. Every time we come to this table, every time we are invited to sit around the table, we have to keep in our minds that the invitation doesn't come from another human being. It doesn't come from the pastor, it doesn't come from the deacons, from the elders, from the deaconesses. It comes from Jesus himself. He invites you to sit at the table. He invites you to be his special, honored guest. So the, 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 the question now is, will you, will you accept that invitation, friends? Will you accept that invitation to sit again with Jesus? Who has that privilege? To be sitting at the table with Jesus. And now it's a small table. But one day, all Christians in the world will come to a table that are miles and miles and miles long. And we are told that we will be able to see each other's face. But most importantly, we will see the loving and beautiful face of Jesus. And I'm so looking forward to that time. I'm so looking forward to that time. How about you? This is the moment when we get ready for that, for sitting, to sit around the table and accept that invitation that the Savior has extended to each one of us. But before we sit at the table, remember, we have to examine ourselves, we have to be clear, we have to be washed. And that is why there is an event that happens before the, the, uh, Lord's, the Lord's Supper. And that event, we call it food washing. What do we use during food washing? Water. What is water a symbol of? Washing. So before we come to sit at the table, before we come with dirty hands or dirty face, the Lord is saying, go and take care of that part. So when you come to the table, you are clean. And this is, again, another invitation for the Lord. Be part of the food washing. Just be part of that. Because that, that has an, an, an important and, 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 a, and a fantastic um, meaning for each one of us. When we come and kneel down before somebody else, another human being, what we are doing is putting aside our pride. And this is an awesome opportunity for, all, for us to say, you know what, I have, I have wrong, wronged you and I confess my sin and I ask for forgiveness. Can we pray for each other? So food washing is the perfect, the Lord not knows what he does. It's the perfect event before the table, before sitting at the table. So we want to invite you to be part of this as we get ready for sitting, to sit with the Lord as he table. As at his table.